Yeah, it's so lively to ride. <laughs> Quick shifter is also amazing on this bike. Naughty, naughty BMW. Welcome along to a gorgeous September, end of September evening, and welcome to the gorgeous BMW S1000R. Now, I borrowed this bike back in, uh, back last year. I got invited to the UK launch of this machine, where we went for a thrash around up in uh, Lincolnshire, and it was a bit of uh, Cadwell Park for the afternoon. Well, it's been a year since I've ridden this bike, and that was only a very quick sort of ride. The bike I was riding actually had a punctured radiator, so I had even less time on the bike. So it's taken me this long to revisit this machine because I was really impressed. I would never really liked the original version of this. I found it a little bit dull, a little bit too clinically good. Well, this new version is based on the new S1000RR, which you know I absolutely love. I, I run a long-termer version of that bike last year and loved it. Well, this is basically the same machine without any fairing on, without the fairing, upright bars, you know, a naked version of the S1000RR called the S1000 Single R. Well, this version's got a few little trinkets on it. This is the M Sport version. It's got the forged wheels. It's got the, the aluminium billet pack. It's got the carbon pack. You know, it's fully loaded, this machine. But join me while I take this bike out for a little bit of a thrash around this beautiful evening. And uh, yeah, this is the S1000R revisited. Chopsy, roll the intro. <laughs> So as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm a massive fan of the S1000RR and I'm actually a massive fan of straight four engines these days. I mean, I love a V4, I love a twin, but there's something brilliant about a straight four for the road. The way it makes its power, how easy they are to ride, how smooth they are, you know, just, just riding around town. And yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm becoming more and more of a straight four for convert these days and uh yeah the s1000rr i had last year as my long term i mean i nearly bought that bike from bmw absolutely loved it i didn't buy it in the end because it meant selling me h2 or, or keeping the s1000rr and the h21 and, and i'm glad it did because the, the value of those have gone through the roof now so that was definitely a good move but i'd love the double r and i really wanted to try again the single R because it's such a great motorcycle. Hang on a sec, let me just put it in my favourite dash view, the sport view. So jumping on this, you know, one of the things you notice is it's quite a sporty position actually. It's very much like the Super Duke, the riding position. You're cantered forward a little bit, you've got a little bit of weight on the bars you know the bars are i love the way the bars are just flat on this bike we will do a bit of a walk around later on but i love the flat bars on this bike you know they're not coming up here they're flat you know i really like that and you've got a little bit of weight on your wrist you know they're a little bit sort of low you're cantered forward a little bit your feet are sort of high for a naked you know not high by sports bike standards thank you sir but they were, you know, they're, they're, they're a nice height. You know, if you took this bike on track, you know, you're not going to run out of ground clearance. Slightly higher, I think, than the like of the, the Speed Triple RS. It's a very engaging riding position. So I think BMW have tried to make this bike more exciting than the, the outgoing single R. And they've definitely achieved that through the riding position. You know, you've got a lot of quick steeringness. <laughs> To this bike now is that a word you know it's definitely more you've definitely got more weight over the front the front is it's got a really lovely bit of feedback a bit of feel through the front wheel on this bike as well you know it's actually a very light machine this it's i think it's about 198 kilos fully fueled in this guys in the m sport guys and this has got the forged wheels as well so you know some of that Agility, you know, the direction changes could be attributed to, to those forged wheels, but and they're not carbon on this, these are just the forged. The brakes are also incredible, you know, really progressive, really nice feeling brakes. You know, the same brake setup as on the double R, and I, you know, I've tracked this, I, I thought the brake setup was brilliant on this, loads of feel, loads of power. I mean, they may not be Brembo brakes on this, but they certainly perform 
as well as any you know Brembo caliper I've ever tested so you know it's just everything works fantastically well on this bike <laughs> this is a, a real tight little little twisty bit here you know knock it down yeah it's sort of one of the criticisms not really criticisms but one of the characteristics of a straight four is you know they can be a little bit weaker lower down in the power range you know you've got to build these engines up to reach the power you know and uh, when you do they're absolutely insane you know but they're a little bit weaker and with this bike obviously the S1000RR had the shift cam so you had a little bit of extra oomph lower down the rev range because of the variable valve timing well on the S1000 single R they didn't include the shift cam so this bike is 165 horsepower sort of tuned to give you more grunt in the bottom end so it, but it doesn't feel quite as lively I'd say at the bottom end as the double R and the gearing is the same as the double R so you know if I were to own one of these machines stay there people it's definitely a bike I would change the front sprocket on fit a, a, a smaller front sprocket larger front sprocket I'd fit a smaller front sprocket down gear it a little bit to make it a little bit more lively at the bottom end but it's not bad it's not bad but that's just one of the characteristics of a straight four engine you know you, you do have to rev them they don't come alive until seven or eight thousand revs i've got it all set up in the super sporty option i've got the dynamic engine map i've got the suspension also in dynamic so you know it, it's the firm ride at the moment and it, i really can feel the texture of the road you know after stepping off the the h2 sx the other week you know which was beautiful but the suspension was set to be plush and you lost the finer details of the tarmac i mean i'm getting good feedback from the tarmac on this not the best ever but i think electronic suspension sometimes dulls the feedback you get from the road a little bit but i'd say it's as good as any of the other electronic systems you know are giving you that feedback when it's pin sharp accurate the steering on this i think that i think that was one of the issues with the old bike it just felt a bit wishy-washy on a steering front this feels pin sharp accurate and what with the brake feel as well you know you really really feel like you can push it on this would be brilliant on track like i said i did take it around cadwell park but it was a bit wet you know it wasn't it wasn't great because of the conditions weren't great the bike's brilliant but I'd love to get it on track again <laughs> because Woo! so you've got to wind up that power yeah it's so lively to ride so engaging I mean you're comparing it to the Super Duke you know because of the way the engine makes the power you don't get that crazy punch that you do on the Duke you know, it takes a little bit of winding up but as I say a gearing change <laughs> quick shifter is also amazing on this bike but it's just so nice on the steering the chassis is so good the brakes are so good yeah, this is very, very, very good. I need to do a track day on this. Woo! Oof, blimey, it's good. <laughs> that is beautiful around there. Really engaging. Cheers, buddy. What I also love with this bike is this button here. Hold that down traction control off single press traction off I haven't got a fight with the menus to find out how to turn the traction control off I haven't got to stop the bike <laughs> to turn the traction control off I hold a button down for three seconds and the traction is off so I can have some fun but you know there's no uh, wheelie control separated from traction control so even though you do have a button which turns off the, the traction control including the wheelie control because they're together you know they're not separated but okay I, I can live with that at least BMW you've given me an easy method to turn the traction off if I want to Woo! oh 
it does bring out the naughty side. It does bring out what's naughty side, this. Quick shifter and blipper is divine on this bike. Really, really good. I think one of the, the BMW system on this engine is one of the best in the business. Really nice. Yeah, those, the braking feel is amazing. Oh yeah, you can, you can brake and turn <laughs> without the bike trying to, to stand upright. Oh, it's very good, you know. It's so much better than the old version. So much better. I love it. And then when you've had your fix, what I love about a straight fall is knock it in a higher gear, it will just poodle around beautifully. Beautiful manners. You haven't got to worry about snatchy throttles. Well, normally, if, if it's fueled properly, you haven't. But it's not like, you know, the Street Fighter, which I found hard work lovely when you're on the boil but when you want to go slow it's got too much engine braking you know it's throwing you back and forward in the seat this is fueled to perfection oh, hey yeah this is good this is good Be very naughty on this. Very, <laughs> very naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty BMW. <laughs> and I'm doing all my braking up front and it's not unsettling the bike. I'm not dragging the rear, which I keep mentioning. Woo! But with the gearing like it is, you do have to now let it rev or you could argue it feels a little hey a little bit flat you know so you, you've got to rev it and i think a couple of alterations to the gearing would really wake this bike up so here is the bmw s 1000 r let's have a little bit of a closer walk around so first thing to note is this has the m forged wheels which look really nice actually look a bit like the uh, sort of the OZ racing wheel that you, they use in MotoGP they're really really nice looking wheels Brembo oh there's me saying it had non-Brembo calipers and I was wrong this actually has the Brembos fitted is that different for this year I'm sure when these came out they had the same brakes is it the Hayes brakes I can't remember is it the Hayes brakes they used to have the bike's got the full carbon M package, so the M carbon mudguard, the M carbon cowl thing. It's also got the billet package, which is the M rear sets, which do look absolutely gorgeous. I do love those, uh, those rear sets. It's even got the matching uh, rear M lever guards, just ready for those track days, and the M levers as well. We've also got a carbon chain guard with the M Sport chain. That's about an extra £100 for the M Sport chain. It's sort of meant to be maintenance free. It's much better than a standard chain. I had that on my S1000 rr I'll definitely get the uh, M Sport chain if you're looking to get one of these. This bike has every extra apart from the radiator and oil guards. I'd highly recommend those. Because it's the M Sport version, it comes with the Akropovich N-Can. Um, these bikes are very quiet because the, the cat on these machines, this exhaust underneath, has so, has so many silences and catalytic converters in it that even if you just put a bean tin on the end of these, they're not that loud. So the Akropovich has got no chance. It doesn't really sound much louder than the standard bike, if I'm absolutely honest. I love the flat bars on this bike you know they're just literally a flat bar you know i think that looks really cool it's the only naked i think which comes with like a flat bar and i think it looks great and i think it gives a bit more weight on the wrist and gives more of a sporty ride as well one of the massive highlights with this bike is this tft i think the bmw tft is still the best best tft in the business still even after like two or three years it's still the best no one has equaled the bmw tft in my opinion 
and you know use with the jog wheel is great and, and everything works pretty quickly on it a lot of these tft systems there's lag in them you know you change your mode they're lag you know, the refresh rate seems really slow on them but not the bmw ones they've nailed it three years ago they nailed it and it's still the best one i also love this maximum lean angle as well when you turn the bike on it gives you the maximum lean angle you've done brilliant probably my least favorite bit of the bike styling wise is the front headlight i've never been overly enamored with what they did with the front headlight on this bike i think they could have done something a bit more aggressive with the front end but it looks okay it's not my favorite front end on a motorcycle so there she is the s1000r beautiful machine so it's the next day after all that craziness <laughs> as, as you could see this bike can bring out your inner hooligan if you let it so so that's all of the uh the performance side of this machine oh, it's going to get run over now i've got to take this back to bmw today so i'm halfway back to farnborough where bmw sort of uh, gb is located so i'm just going to talk about what i found you know it's brilliant as you, as you saw i mean it, it really impressed me you know when you're pushing on but let's just talk about what's it like in town what's it like to live with as we ride back to bmw's headquarters to return this little beauty i'm a little bit sad it's keyless but you still need a key for the fuel cap you know so if you're gonna go keyless i'm a bit of a you may as well go the whole hog you know if you've got a fish about for your key to put the fuel in that's not exactly brilliant is it but whatever whatever keyless and keep that bit of it <laughs> So, what have I found? What, what are my conclusions with this bike? Well, I, I met up yesterday after my bit of hoonage. I met up with Greg and Alex on, on their 690s and 701s and, and the hoonage continued a little bit on this bike. But Greg had a little go on this just to try it and he thought there was a lot of weight on your wrists. He actually thought it wasn't too much different than the GSX R1000 from the weight you've got on your wrists. And, yeah, riding here this morning, I sort of agree with him a little bit. With these drop bars, I mean, it, it makes this bike so agile. It makes it handle beautifully. But you do get a little bit of weight on your wrists with this setup. It's not, it's not too extreme, but there is more weight on your wrists than, say, the Speed Triple RS, for example. You know, I think it's quite similar, actually, to the Super Duke. I mentioned that before, but I think the riding position is very, very similar to the Super Duke. So it's an aggressive, naked riding position, which suits me, but it may not suit others. So you know, ensure you test ride this bike. Another thing people always say with this engine, oh, it's very vibey, it's very vibey. And I mentioned earlier on about down gearing it, you know, to make it a bit more pep. And that would definitely pepper things up at the bottom end but I've just been coming on the motorway this morning and at 70 miles an hour it's doing four and a half thousand revs so it's revving quite nice and low and I mentioned that BMW haven't changed the gearing on this compared to the double R version I think the reason for that is if you were to down gear it the vibrations you do feel through the bars would be worse because it would be revving slightly higher so at the moment you can sit at 70 at four and a half thousand revs there's a little bit of buzz in the bars i mean this engine has always been a little bit buzzy i mean i'm not going to deny that it's there it is a little bit buzzy and if you down gear it you know when you're sat at 70 it's going to be revving slightly higher and those in that buzziness is going to be slightly worse so i think that is the reason that bmw haven't geared this differently to the s1000 rr because they didn't want to make the the vibrations any worse through the bars one thing i love about this bike and you know it's probably you know what bmw do so well is you know it's just so easy to live with it's so easy to ride you know some of the v4 motorcycles and i mentioned this a little bit earlier on didn't i but you know they can be hard work they can be hard work to ride it's slipping the front there they could be hard work to ride sometimes, but of a straight four, you know, it's very smooth. The throttle response is perfect. You know, you haven't got to finesse the throttle like you have on the Tawono, for example. You know, it's just, it's just easy 
it's just very very easy and then BMW on top of that I must say one thing which isn't easy finding neutral can be a little bit tricky on it that's one thing I've noticed but one thing BMW do do very well so you've got that ease of use of a straight four you know, the smoothness apart from the slight vibrations but then BMW bring all of their interface all of their know-how from you know their their touring bikes the GS you know they bring all of that heated grips you know brilliant cruise control system you know they just bring all of that convenience to a sporty bike like they did with the double r you know back in the day the first bike to come with heated grips and cruise control you know and it transforms transforms the bike and uh, it all just works so well on the bmws something else you could say the, you know the electronics on this are not as customizable as some of the other brands you know it's not as customizable as the Tuona you know you can't go in and adjust all your suspension turn your wheelie control off and your traction control you know buttons here to adjust the traction on the fly They're like the Super Duke as well I mean that is that is the same I guess so is the V4 Street Fighter you know that there's more configurable options on those bikes so and on this I do have you know a button which I can just adjust the suspension you, you don't get that on the double R version so that is a bit better on this but you know you can't adjust traction control via you know the, the mode you're in there sort of prefixed I think you need like the dynamic pack where you can you can only do that in race mode where you can adjust the, the traction control you know in, in, in the race mode that's it so you can't do that on the road but what BMW have done very well with this bike is they've just got it set up perfectly and I, I had it exactly the same on the double R and that was one of my comments on the double R you know you don't feel like you need to adjust the traction levels as you change the modes it just all works so well that traction control system that you, you just ride the bike and you just forget about it and that's the best system ever isn't it a system where you don't have to think am I in the right mode have I got the right traction level it just does it and uh, that, that's a you know even though it's a bit of a negative because you can't customize that stuff it's almost like you don't need to on this bike and, and that's that's really really good this bike with the extras as i said it is a twenty thousand pound motorcycle you know if you want all that bling blingy blingy extras 15 and a half grand for what you really need you know the cruise control heated grips you know all, all of the stuff which makes sense on a road bike you know rather than the blingy bits and the biggie bits are nice, don't get me wrong, but you know, the price can get out of control when you start adding those. But 15 grand, I think, is well, it's reasonable money. Very similar, as I said, to the Triumph. So, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been impressed with this. And actually, you know, I, I love this platform. I love my double R. And I'm, I'm tempted to ask BMW if, if they'd lend me one of these as a long-termer for next year, because... I think this would be fantastic on track so I really want to take this on track so I think it'll, re it'll be really good on track so I'd love to do that and I'd just love to have this for the year and, and see how I get on with it I've got all my luggage which will fit on you know I've got all that SSW Motec luggage I bought from a double R which will bolt straight on here those soft panniers I've got some carbon bits and bobs as well, you know, like these panels here which I took off my double R I had. So I've got a few little blingy bits which would bolt straight on here. The luggage would make give it some sort of touring ability. So uh, yeah, I'm quite tempted to maybe borrow one of these as, as a long term next year. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that would be something you'd, you'd like to see? Because uh, it's impressed me. I would never a fan of the old bike, as I mentioned at the beginning, but I think BMW have transformed this bike it's, it's a much more engaging motorcycle than it was before you know, they've addressed the criticisms that it was a bit sterile you know brilliant but a bit sterile I think they've addressed that now you know it, you could argue you know it's not as engaging as a Tuono it's not as engaging as a Super Duke it's not as engaging as a V4 Ducati but that's just the nature that's neutral that's just the nature of a straight four engine they're not as engaging but what they do make is fantastically smooth brilliant road bikes thank you oh this is it bmw uk goodbye sweet s1000r hopefully we will meet again 
very soon. You little beauty. Look at that, that's nice, isn't it? BMW, could, could I buy one of these for a couple of weeks? Who wants to see a review on the new M3 competition? <laughs> you do, guys, don't you? You do? Because uh, I'd really like to, uh, to have a go in that. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, not as nice as this, obviously. Too many wheels, isn't it? 